It was as if we were afraid at some level that we might wake this mummy up because she seemed just so alive. In this one, we will look at the people who managed to evade death or at least managed to make it seem like they did. Some people have found themselves accidentally preserved forever, while others spent their lives preparing for elaborate mummification methods. Either way, we have a collection of rare individuals who never faded away, from China's living mummy to the incredibly well-preserved Swedish man. Here's 20 people who were frozen in time. <laughs> Number 20, Lady Dai. The mummy of Lady Dai, also known as Xin Zhui, is still with us thanks to the preservation techniques of ancient China. Despite leading a luxurious lifestyle that adversely affected her health, Lady Dai is known as China's sleeping beauty due to the condition of her well-preserved body. Construction workers accidentally discovered Lady Dai's tomb in Mawangdui, China in the 1960s. Thousands of artifacts from the ancient Han Dynasty were also found including delicate silk manuscripts, lacquered vessels, and herbal medicines made with various ingredients. Despite the deterioration of the bodies of Li Kong and a young man found in another tomb, Lady Dai's mummy remained remarkably preserved. Her veins still contain congealed blood, and much of her soft tissues remain intact, even over 2,100 years later. Her body appears more like a recent cadaver in a mortuary than an ancient mummy. Lady Dai's preservation can be attributed to several factors. She was buried in four lacquered coffins, draped in a silk painting, and dressed in 18 layers of silk and linen clothing, providing a protective shield against external elements. Furthermore, the coffin contained a mysterious clear liquid that turned brown upon exposure to air. This liquid may have been a traditional Chinese herbal solution used in preservation. Lady Dai's mummy provides valuable insights into ancient Chinese burial practices and the preservation techniques employed by the people of the time. Her well-preserved body continues to fascinate scientists and historians. It throws some light on the lives of ancient nobility and their beliefs about the afterlife. If you're enjoying these tales of mummified and preserved folks, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, you might wake up one day with a mummy knocking at your door. Time for the rare topic. In the world of unexplained phenomena, two captivating images have confused folks on the internet for years. They seem to show people frozen in time. The first image portrays a body eerily merged with a tree trunk, a spine chilling sight. How did this person become intertwined with the tree? What could have led to such a bizarre occurrence? The second image reveals a person trapped in ice, appearing as if they were in the act of climbing out at the exact moment the lake froze over. What circumstances led to their frozen fate? Will they forever remain in that position, imprisoned in ice? These odd images leave us with more questions than answers. Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19, Europe's best preserved mummies. At Lund University in Sweden, researchers have uncovered a curious find, a well-preserved 17th century mummy belonging to Peter Winstrup. Winstrup was a prominent figure in Scandinavian history, with multiple influential roles, including physics professor, architect, entrepreneur, and chaplain to the Danish king. What sets this discovery apart is the preservation of the mummy, with organs, skin, and clothing still intact. Despite being over three centuries old, the body has been very well preserved, leaving researchers puzzled as to the reason behind it. Amazingly, this is not the only discovery from Lund Cathedral's crypt, with another well-preserved mummy found in 2013, believed to be from the 14th century. These discoveries tell us a lot about the historical significance of Lund Cathedral and its crypt, which is clearly a treasure trove of archaeological finds. Number 18, Gold Monk. Researchers were amazed by the preservation of the mummified body of Master Qi Xian, a revered Buddhist master from 1,000 years ago. A recent CT scan at Dinghui Temple in Wuhan, China, confirmed that his bones were healthy and his brain was fully intact, leaving witnesses astonished. Master Qi Xian was a highly respected monk 
who traveled from India to China to spread Buddhism. He translated important Buddhist texts into Chinese characters and was honored as the National Buddhist Master of Khitan. After his passing, disciples preserved his body using natural methods. It is said that when a Buddhist master sensed their approaching death, they would decide whether to be cremated or preserved. The disciples would place the remains in a large ceramic jar filled with anti-corrosive substances. After three years, if the body had not decayed, it would be covered with a special paste made from sticky rice, resulting in a meat body Buddha. Similarly, certain Buddhist monks in Japan practiced self-mummification, or Sokushinbut, undergoing extreme self-mortification and diet restrictions to achieve mummification after. This practice required years of preparation and dedication. Number 17, 1,000-year-old mummy. Peruvian archaeologists made a fascinating find digging up an amazingly well-preserved mummy of a teenage guy from the pre-Inca era. The mummy was found within the ancient mud urban center of Cajamarquilla, located on the outskirts of Lima. It is considered to be within the range of 800 and 1200 years old. The mummy, which is thought to be a boy between 12 and 13 years old, was found in a tomb that was two meters deep and hidden by a big mud rock. The area's thick sand and high salt content probably helped the mummy turn into a mummy on its own. This is why the mummy's arms, wrists, legs, hair, and even some of its teeth are still in good shape. Despite being centuries old, the remains still retain patches of skin, and the intact hair provides a rare glimpse into the individual's physical appearance. Archaeologists discovered a stone sword, a mate plate, copper needle, cloth pieces, corn, and chili peppers with the mummy. These findings tell us some interesting things about the lifestyle, diet, and cultural life of the Ichma culture, which thrived for approximately 900 years before being incorporated into the Inca Empire. Cajamarquilla is an important archaeological site that once served as a bustling urban center. Looking around, you get a real sense of the complexity and sophistication of the ancient civilizations that inhabited the region. The Ichma culture, famous for their expertise in irrigation, developed agricultural practices along the Peruvian coast. They constructed canals and terraces to maximize agricultural productivity in the arid coastal desert. Number 16, Buddhist monk. Incredible photos have surfaced revealing the preserved body of the late Buddhist monk, Luang Phu Pian, who passed away on November 16, 2017. His followers exhumed his body a year after he died as part of a traditional Buddhist ceremony. Despite several months of being deceased, Luang Phu Pian's body showed incredible levels of preservation, even with a serene expression resembling a smile. According to local experts, the monk's body appeared as if he had been deceased for no more than 36 hours, defying the natural decay process. This state is interpreted as a symbol of Luang Phu Pian's attainment of nirvana, the ultimate goal in Buddhist spirituality. Luang Phu Pian's followers paraded his body through a crowd, taking widely shared photographs on social media. The monks removed the body from the coffin to dress it in new, clean robes, while his followers continue to offer prayers until a final ceremony is held on the hundredth day after his passing. Luang Phu Pian spent most of his life as a revered spiritual leader in Lopuri, central Thailand, after being ordained as a monk at 50. The ritual of exhuming and dressing deceased relatives, known as Mahnene, also exists in Indonesia to honor the spirits and maintain a connection to the ancestral village. Number 15, Pompeii. In 79 AD, when Mount Vesuvius erupted in a terrible way, it destroyed the old city of Pompeii and took the lives of more than 20,000 people. The ash from the volcano that covered the city was so thick that it kept the town and its people alive for hundreds of years until they were found again in 1599. Pompeii is like a time vault for the rich Roman culture of the time. It gives us a chance to see what people did every day. The preserved human remains have allowed scientists to study the physical characteristics, health conditions, and personal stories of the people of Pompeii. The age, gender, and possible reasons of death have been found through this research. Archaeologists' careful work keeps revealing new things about Pompeii, which helps us learn more about the old world. These finds give us a better idea of what life was like for the people who used to live in Pompeii. Number 14, Lama Dashi Dorzo Itigilov. The story of Lama Dashi Dorzo Itigilov is a fascinating one. Born in 1852, he was a devout Buddhist who dedicated his life to spiritual pursuits. He attained high levels of education, studying medicine and philosophy at a Buddhist university. 
In 1911, Idigilov was appointed as the 12th Pandito Kambo Lama, the spiritual leader of Buddhism in Russia. Throughout his life, he was known for his connection to nature and his interest in herbal medicine. However, the most amazing aspect of Idigilov's story comes after his death. According to his wishes, his body was mummified instead of being cremated or buried. In 1927, he entered a state of deep meditation and passed away. Remarkably, when his body was exhumed in 2002, it was found to be incredibly well-preserved, showing minimal signs of decay. Scientists and experts have been puzzled by this phenomenon. They have studied Itagilov's mummified body extensively to understand the preservation process and the factors contributing to its state. His body remains intact despite being over a century old, with skin, hair, and even internal organs remarkably well-preserved. Lama Dashi Dorzo Itagilov's body is currently housed in a special glass case in Ivolginsky Datstan, a Buddhist temple in Russia. It is considered a sacred relic and attracts visitors from around the world who want to witness its state of preservation. Number 13, Miracle Nun. Gower, Missouri recently became a place of great interest due to the preservation of Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster's body. Four years after her burial, her body has shown minimal signs of decay. Sister Wilhelmina, who founded the Benedictine Sisters of Mary, Queen of the Apostles, passed away in May 2019 at 95. A year later, the nuns exhumed her coffin to relocate it beneath the altar in the convent's chapel following customary procedures. However, to their amazement, when they opened the coffin, they found Sister Wilhelmina's body very well preserved, with her foot still wearing a sock and no significant signs of deterioration. The nuns were amazed to see that her facial features, including her eyelashes, hair, eyebrows, nose, and lips remained intact, despite some dirt affecting her right eye, which they covered with a wax mask. They also noticed that her habit and the crown and bouquet of flowers she was buried with were pristine after washing off a layer of mold and mildew. The concept of incorruptibility has been reported in various religious traditions throughout history, with some interpreting it as a sign of divine intervention. Number 12. The Princess of Xiaohe. The Princess of Xiaohe was uncovered in 2003 at the Xiaohe Cemetery in Lopnur, Xinjiang. She possesses European features like other mummies in the area and is remarkably well preserved with intact clothes, hair, and even eyelashes. The archaeologists from the Xinjiang Institute of Archaeology discovered the Princess of Xiaohe at Tomb 11 in Cemetery No. 5, located 102 kilometers west of Lulan in Lopnur. Despite her lack of social status, she was given the title of Princess of Xiaohe due to her state of preservation and beauty. Her burial took place around 3,800 years ago, and she was a member of the Xiaohe. The Princess of Xiaohe's exceptional preservation is due to the desert's arid and salty conditions and tightly sealed coffins wrapped in cowhide. Cowhide shrank as it dried, creating a tight seal for the coffins. It's important to note that her body was not embalmed, but naturally mummified due to the climate and burial method. Some mummies, complex burials, and European features raise plenty of questions about the region's history and connections to other civilizations. Number 11, Eerie Freeze-Dried Bodies. The Kilakitsuk mummies are thought to be the best preserved mummies found in North America. They're made up of eight Inuit people who lived in Greenland about 500 years ago. The mummies were found in an Inuit village that had been abandoned. They are thought to have died around the year 1475. Even though time has passed, the mummies still have their skin, hair, and toenails. This is because the very cold temperatures of the area caused the bodies to accidentally turn into mummies. The Inuits were found with their fur coats on, which they wore to keep warm in the cold. Archaeologists found 78 pieces of clothes made from the skin of seals, reindeer, and other animals. The baby was found to have been buried alive, which was against Inuit custom at the time. When a mother died, her children were buried with her so that they could stay together in the future. Even though the cause of death is still unknown, the finding of the Kilakitsuk mummies has taught us a lot about how the old Inuit lived and what they believed. The mummies are on show at the Greenland National Museum in Nuuk, and they helped us learn more about the past of North America. Number 10, Siberian Ice Maiden. In 1993, Russian archaeologists made an interesting discovery on the Ukok Plateau near the Russia-Chinese border. 
Following information about a grave robbery, they found a large block of ice, which they began melting to reveal the mummified body of a 25-year-old princess known as the Siberian Ice Maiden. Her tattoos made her even more fascinating. Now we know something about her ancient cultural rituals. Further exploration of the site uncovered more artifacts, harnesses, saddle pieces, and a table with a preserved meal of fatty mutton were discovered. Six horses marked with pickaxe wounds indicated they had been executed. The princess's body, in great condition, displayed tattoos on both arms and fingers. Her shoulder tattoo of a griffin's beak was the most prominent. The cause of her death remained a mystery until recent advancements. Dr. Andrei Letyagin determined that she likely died from breast cancer through MRI scans. The presence of cannabis in her grave suggested that she relied on it for pain relief. Embalmed with herbs, grasses, and wool, her skin remained intact. She was adorned in silk clothing, wore a wig made of female hair, and had a cosmetic bag on her left hip. Debates around the Ice Maiden's origin with DNA analysis indicating she belonged to the Pazaric culture, a Scythian nomadic civilization. Her facial features were more Caucasoid than Mongoloid, illustrating the multi-ethnic nature of ancient nomadic cultures. Number nine, the loneliest man on earth. The death of the Man of the Hole, the last remaining member of an uncontacted indigenous group in Brazil, brought attention to the plight of isolated tribes in the Amazon. Living in complete isolation for approximately 26 years, he earned the title of the loneliest man in the world. His body was discovered by Brazil's indigenous affairs agency. The man was found in a hammock outside his straw hut, adorned with brightly colored feathers. No signs of violence were evident, leading officials to believe he had prepared for his death. Estimated to be around 60, he was the sole survivor of the indigenous group that once inhabited the Tanaru territory in Rondonia. The Tanaru territory has a history of violence and is considered one of the most dangerous regions in Brazil. Survival International, a group that fights for the rights of indigenous people, says that since the 1970s, cow farmers looking for land have eliminated most of the rest of the tribe. The few people who were left there were slayed in 1995. The man of the whole will be given an autopsy and the federal police will write a report about what they find. His death wasn't for nothing, because it shows how important it is to protect the rights and lands of remote groups in the Amazon. Their cultures and ways of life are threatened by things like cutting down trees, murderous Brazilian farmers, doing illegal things, and moving in. It is thought that there are about 100 uncontacted tribes in the world, and a lot of them live in the Amazon jungle. These groups often choose to stay alone because they have been hurt or taken advantage of. They represent a rich variety of human cultures and practices that need to be protected. Number eight, Saint Bernadette. The body of Saint Bernadette Soburius, displayed in a crystal coffin in a chapel at the abbey where she served as a nun, is well known for its remarkably preserved appearance. However, it is not her actual body that is on display, but a wax mask created by Pierre Imans, fashion mannequin designer. Despite this, her story and the miracles associated with her inspire millions of visitors who come to the shrine in Lourdes each year. Born into a poor family in the Victorian era of France, Bernadette gained fame at 14 when she reported seeing visions of the Virgin Mary, known as Our Lady of Lourdes. The apparition appeared multiple times and guided Bernadette to a healing spring, which has since become a popular pilgrimage site. Many miraculous healings have been attributed to the waters of Lourdes, after joining a nunnery in Nevers, Bernadette lived out the rest of her life there, eventually succumbing to tuberculosis in 1879. Her body was exhumed three times as part of the canonization process, with the final exhumation in 1925, resulting in her placement in the crystal casket. Although officially pronounced as incorrupt by the church, the condition of her body was not entirely consistent with the term. Her body was described as mummified and covered with mildew and salts, with the skin missing in some areas. A wax mask was later added to her face and hands to improve her appearance. Thanks to the unintentional mishandling during the exhumations, she might have remained more preserved if she had been left undisturbed. Nevertheless, her story and the spiritual significance attributed to her continue to attract believers and visitors to the chapel where her body is displayed. Number seven, Inca Maiden. The Andean mountain top mummies found in South America are distinct from other ice mummies worldwide, such as the famous Iceman from the Alps. 
These mummies were frozen at the time of their deaths due to Inca sacrificial rituals, resulting in their preservation in a frozen state with minimal decomposition even after centuries have passed. Unlike other ice mummies, the Andean mummies were intentionally buried while still alive. This practice is described by several chroniclers, giving us a peek at the sometimes gruesome nature of Inca sacrificial rituals. The high-altitude, snow-laden mountains of the Andes provided the ideal conditions for preserving these frozen bodies. The cold temperatures and lack of oxygen showed the decomposition process, allowing the mummies to remain remarkably well-preserved even after five centuries. One of the most famous Andean mountaintop mummies is the Ice Maiden, or Juanita, discovered on Mount Ampato in Peru in 1995. Juanita was a young Incan girl sacrificed and buried on the mountaintop. Her frozen and well-preserved body has provided valuable information about Inca rituals and their gruesome beliefs surrounding human sacrifice. Number six, John Torrington and the Franklin Expedition. John Shaw Torrington, a Royal Navy stoker, played a significant role in the disastrous Franklin Expedition of 1845. The expedition aimed to explore uncharted regions of what is now Nunavut, Canada, in search of the Northwest Passage and to conduct scientific research. Unfortunately, Torrington became the expedition's first casualty, ultimately leading to its members' demise, mostly in the vicinity of King William Island. He was laid to rest on Beachy Island. In 1984, forensic anthropologist Owen Beatty exhumed Torrington's body to uncover the cause of his death. This undertaking revealed that Torrington's remains were very well preserved, making him one of the best preserved corpses since the discovery of Toland Man. The examination of Torrington's body told some of the story of the tragic fate of the Franklin expedition. Analysis indicated that he suffered from lead poisoning, likely caused by the lead solder in the expedition's canned food. Other crew members also showed signs of lead contamination. The preservation of Torrington's body and the subsequent investigations have shed light on the hardships and challenges faced by the members of the Franklin expedition. Their tragic story just goes to show the perils of exploration and the unforgiving nature of the Arctic environment, or lead, could be either. The Franklin expedition's ships, HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, were lost during the expedition, and their precise locations remained a mystery for many years. In 2014 and 2016, the wreckages of these two ships were finally discovered in the Arctic. Number five, Tolund Man. The Tolund Man is an impressive example of a naturally preserved bog body, dating back to the fifth century BC in Denmark. Discovered in 1950 near Silkeborg, his well-preserved physical features initially led to the mistaken belief that he was a recent murder victim. The Tolund Man is linked to the pre-Roman Iron Age in Scandinavia. The bog where Tolan Man was discovered had previously yielded another bog body known as the Elling Woman, which was found 12 years earlier. The conditions of the bog environment are responsible for the preservation of the Tolund Man's body. The acidic and oxygen-poor nature of the bog creates an environment that slows down decomposition and acts as a natural preservative. As a result, the Tolan Man's body retained details such as facial features, hair, and even the imprint of his stubble. Pollen samples in his stomach suggest that he ate a diet primarily consisting of grains and seeds. The presence of ergot fungus in his system indicates that he may have consumed rye, which can be contaminated with this fungus and cause hallucinogenic effects. Number four, 700-year-old mummy. During the widening of a street in Taizhou, China, building workers found a mummy that is thought to be from the Ming Dynasty. The mummy was in surprisingly good shape. The woman was a high-ranking member. Her body and two other wooden tombs were found two meters below the top of the road. The excellent condition of her features, including her skin, hair, eyelashes, and face, left the Chinese archaeologists from the Museum of Taizhou astonished. The mummy had been preserved in a brown liquid inside the coffin and was dressed in traditional Ming Dynasty costumes. Bones, ceramics, ancient writings, and other relics were also found in the coffin. Five other well-preserved mummies were found between 1979 and 2008, which sparked interest in learning more about the Ming Dynasty's burying practices and ways to keep things in good shape. During this important time, the Forbidden City in Beijing was built. The Grand Canal and the Great Wall were fixed up. 
and a large navy and a strong army of one million people were set up. Number three, Eva Perón. Eva Perón, the wife of President Juan Perón, was a significant figure to the people of Argentina in the 1940s. Her image was commonly displayed in households alongside the Virgin Marys, a fact that tells you about her status as a national treasure. Following her death, her body was not buried, but preserved by a highly skilled doctor entrusted with the task. The results were so good that the government put her body in a house in Italy, where the guardian is said to have become obsessed with it and lost his mind. But her body was finally brought back to Argentina, where she has been frozen in time ever since. Evita was a strong politician in Argentina who worked hard to improve worker rights and programs for social aid. People loved her because she never stopped trying to help those who were less fortunate. Despite her tragically premature death at 33, her legacy continues to inspire a nation. Number two, Kim Jong-il's body. Kim Jong-il, who used to run North Korea, died on December 17, 2011. He was 69 years old. His body was embalmed after he died so that it could be shown to the people. Russian experts who had also kept his father, Kim Il-sung, took care of his body. Kim Jong-il's body was put in a glass coffin at the Kamsusan Memorial Palace in Pyongyang, North Korea, after it was put in a tomb. The house was turned into a tomb for him, just like the one that was built for his father. The people were able to go see the dead boss and pay their respects. Kim Jong-il's preserved body was shown to the public and was also part of big parades and events held in his honor. The North Korean government kept promoting his cult of personality by putting the spotlight on his accomplishments and leadership while he was in charge. But in 2012, it was said that Kim Jong-il's body had been taken out of the glass coffin so that it could be fixed. The people did not know the specifics of the repair process or how long it took. Even though no one knows for sure where or how Kim Jong-il's body is being kept, it is thought to be still in the care of the North Korean government. The Kumsusan Memorial Palace is still an important place to remember the late leader, and his memory is honored every year on February 16th, which was his birthday. Number one, Sylvester the Gunslinger. Sylvester, the preserved body of a male Caucasian, gained fame as a sideshow attraction in the United States during the 20th century. Although it was initially claimed that Sylvester was found in the Gila Bend Desert, Arizona, in 1895, Recent tests have disproven this story. Sylvester's body features a hole in his chest with what appeared to be bloodstains around it. Sideshow exhibitors promoted the narrative that it was a bullet wound, but further investigation revealed that the hole was made with a drill and the discoloration was due to paint. In 1955, Sylvester was purchased by the Ye Old Curiosity Shop in Seattle, Washington. He was displayed at the 1962 Seattle World's Fair and has remained in a glass case at the Curiosity Shop ever since. Studies conducted in 2001 and 2005 found gunshot pellets in Sylvester's right cheek, neck, and lungs, indicating injuries sustained years before his death. The cause of his death remains unknown, although the 2001 analysis suggested tuberculosis as a possibility. The preservation and exhibition of human remains as sideshow attractions were common in the past, reflecting a morbid fascination with death and the unusual. What can we learn from these preserved individuals about our shared human history? And how does the preservation of human remains impact our understanding of life and death? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.